Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here of Courtside Digest Riker. The Miami Heat have been swept. You picked them to beat the Milwaukee Bucks and I, I, yes you did in your bracket. Did you pick the, the Miami Heat? There is no way I picked the Miami Heat. I went on about how the addition of Drew Holiday, even if it was a close game, it has, the ball has to be in Jimmy Butler's hands. He's the only scorer and Drew Holiday is the guy that's going to come up with those stops. I picked the Bucks. Okay. I thought you picked the Heat, so I was ready to roast you starting off, but we were both correct in the first knocked out of the series. Now, Riker, people might be wondering, you know, I got the Heat jersey back there, Kawhi Leonard's in the thumbnail, he's there, but why is Ben wearing a Knicks jersey, specifically number four, specifically Nate Robinson, if you guys can see that? Well, might have to play the new segment, Riker. <laughs> Your, your mouth and hold your stomach in tight to take this hit that you bought. That's right. We have our first knockout of the year. The Miami Heat, they get this dubious award, Riker. 0-4 swept to the Milwaukee Bucks. A lot of Heat fans are in pretty bad spirits. They're looking like Nate Robinson did against Jake Paul in that fight after this game. What are your takeaways from this series? This is not surprising to me, although you try to you try to put this one on me, Ben. It shouldn't be surprising to anybody outside of feet, the Heat fandom, outside of the Heat fan base, because this Bucks team, they had no business getting swept last year. Then they improved their roster. And I talked about Drew Holiday. We also talked about how Jay Crowder is a huge glaring gap in their roster now. And on top of that, Bam disappeared. Butler disappeared. All of their main guys absolutely became a fraction of themselves. So much so that they broke out a pretty foul mouth chant in one of their games, which we can't play. We're keeping it PG, but I'm sure everybody knows the reference. Then I, there's anger everywhere. And if you scroll through the Miami Heat Reddit, I think it's reflective of what the entire fan base is feeling right now. And number one, let's just go through it chronologically. Number one, they're frustrated with Bam out of bio and Raptors fans, they they know this frustration because it's the same thing that they're saying about Pascal Siakam. We gave him max contract. He's getting good stats in the regular season. And now playoffs, when you need him most, disappears. What are your thoughts on that, Ben? Well, it's an interesting case because Bam out of bio obviously had a really strong bubble playoffs last season. And he had a little bit of a down year, wasn't an all-star, but we've seen a lot of these guys come into the season and get that sort of treatment. and come out Julius Randle struggling the playoffs as well right those big power forwards that aren't necessarily I guess Julius Randle's really improved his three-point shooting and Siakam did a little bit as well but those types of bigs that are mostly athletic energy guys have really struggled this season and it's showing even though there's fans back now Bam Adebayo struggled in these playoffs uh he had an all right game to to end it off but again really just not playing at the level he was playing at in previous seasons so Maybe that's a part of the the weird season. There's less energy. There's less fans, even though fans came back at the very end there. But less, just the energy guys sort of struggle in these sort of settings. I don't know. Maybe that's a reach. But seeing that happen to a few guys at that position, it could be a little trend we're seeing across the league record. But Bam Adebayo obviously is a very skilled, young, big man. And... Heat fans are pretty disappointed with him. I don't think he should get that treatment that uh, Siakam got, obviously, in the in the bubble and get, get roasted and all these things. I still think he has a lot of potential. He'll be able to bounce back from this. But should the Heat be worried about maybe giving him the reins now that Jimmy Butler's one year older and he even struggled in this series as well? Well, listen, Bam's guaranteed 168 million dollars over the next five years so it's justifiable that you're expecting more from a max contract guy but he's young he's 23 his regular season stats went up from what was it 15 points to 18 points per game 10 rebounds five assists they dropped down from last year's playoff performance obviously versus the regular season also versus last year's playoff benchmark but otherwise it's too early to con get concerned you have a picture of him it's been floating around even their own fans are 
disparaging him that much that they're saying this Marlins game, this photo shot is when it all started slipping for him. So they're ready to grill into him, just like Toronto Raptors fans are ready to grill into Pascal Siakam. But Ben, it doesn't stop there. Again, obviously they're disappointed in Jimmy Butler, but Jimmy Butler's never been, he's been the energy, the motor, the closer. I don't think he's ever been at any point in his career, the start to finish offensive creator. So I don't think that they necessarily expected him to do more, but they're looking at the rest of the team. Next couple of guys, they're point guards. Uh, just, they're just saying Jimmy Josh, Butler. Jimmy Butler. All right, pause on Jimmy Butler. Pause on Jimmy Butler. He was expected to be the offensive creator. He was. But listen, he he averaged season. he averaged. Oh god, I was about to defend him. He only averaged 15 points on 30 percent shooting in this series. <laughs> I was about to defend him and say he didn't play that bad, but he actually didn't. He didn't play very good at all. The, the off, you know, outside of scoring and I guess initiating offense and maybe decision making, I thought his defense was fine. I thought he just ran into holes on the offensive end, and it didn't really make any sense. I believe he had a triple double to end it off. You probably have the box score in front of you, but. You know, Jimmy Butler does all the little things to get you wins, and in the bubble, we saw him take his game to the next level, do what his team needed him to do to take over and make that finals run. And this is another thing I want to point out. People are going to say that that Heat bubble run was an absolute fluke, and you and I kind of weren't sold that the Heat were this amazing team finals you know that that's been our perspective on it that's been our take but just because they got swept this season shouldn't take anything away from that finals run it was tremendously impressive jimmy butler it shouldn't be a crazy knock on on those guys they obviously came back with a different team as well so i don't want to knock that bubble season which i'm sure everyone's gonna do now after them getting swept to the milwaukee bucks but jimmy butler yes he's not known as uh LeBron James as creator in terms of getting shots for people and stuff but he is expected to do that on these Miami Heat teams he wasn't necessarily that guy for the Philadelphia 76ers when he was a uh, unless it was down the clutch he was that guy down the last two minutes of the game but really Simmons and Embiid carried the load for those Sixers teams throughout the course of those games and, I'd argue and those are really talented teams Ben the, those are really talented teams so yeah. and you can look back as far as Chicago he was the closer on that Chicago yeah. Bulls team so yeah. Yeah. You, you That's know, all I want to Jimmy, say. <laughs> you know, Jimmy Butler, like he he was that guy. He was that offensive career. Expected to be that number one guy in the past. Supposed to be that for the Heat. Couldn't get it done. You brought up Drew Holiday and all the those guys, but we'll we'll talk about the Bucks in another video. You brought up the point the the point guards, the guards on this team. Drajic obviously is one year older now, dealing with injuries. People were hoping he'd bounce back from those bubble injuries, those ankle issues. Kendrick Nunn, he's a free agent this offseason. There's a lot of frustration around these guards, especially after this series right here. Yeah. Well, Goran Dragic, he's making a lot of money, and he is getting pretty old. So general consensus is don't pick up his team option, his $19.5 million team option. And then, I don't know if you put the graphic up or there is, at least the Athletic is reporting, that Kendrick Nunn is seeking about 15 to $16 million per year as a free agent. Mm -hmm. And Heat fans are saying, you might get it, but not from us. Not a chance from this organization. And I don't necessarily blame them because 16, 15, $16 million for a guy that you're not confident can be your starting point guard of the future, that's a lot of money to pay. And that's a lot of money to pay for a backup who you're still not satisfied with his stats. And that's why names like Kyle Lowry were really big in the free or the trade deadline this most recent uh, regular season. So it's interesting what they're going to have to do there for the point guards because obviously they've locked in Bam out of bio. They can re-sign Jimmy Butler, but Oladipo, don't know if they'll want him. Drogic, they don't want. None, they don't want. It's it, Their one spot is a little bit peculiar. And who do we just break down? Colin Sexton? Maybe that is an option for them, Ben. Who knows what's going to... We're going to dive into all the hypotheticals to sort of end off this video. But to keep on Kendrick Nunn, you brought up that contract. He's probably going to get from some team. He's a young player in terms of NBA years. I believe it's his third season this year, Riker. Second or third season. So not many... 25 years, years old. Yeah, 25 years old. He's not a young rookie or young, young guy. Young NBA player. Because he came into the league, got his rookie season going. Was Is this his second season that just finished? I'd have to search it. Yeah, I I'll, believe I'll it's his it second up. year right but 25 years old he's you question room for improvement for a guy that's 25 but again nba years actual years it's its own thing but second year yep second year so he's going into his third season next year Riker, 
he had a very up and down year because there was times he was completely out of the rotation. There was times when Drogic was out. He was coming in, stepping into games, looking like a true young star. And that's kind of been his career. That's That's been the summary on his career. Ups and downs, ups and downs. So I'm when a young guy like that, someone's going to take a risk on him. Someone's going to make that risk. 15 points per game, three yeah. assists per game, three rebounds, 38% three-point shooter, 48% from the field. That's a good stat line. He basically averaged that in both of his first two seasons of the NBA. I think he's worth $15 yeah. million dollars to the right team. You're you're right. Yeah, in, but again, Miami Heat fans, they, they want... They, they don't want... T- they tasted that finals glory... They, they were two games away. They know this core is capable of making a run such as that. And, to, and uh, Kendrick Nunn's probably not that starting point guard you necessarily want. They want to bring in different players. But speaking of young guys, actual young guys, Tyler Hero, he was, a, he was an enigma this season. Came in with MVP expectations, it felt like, from, uh, from Heat fans, from people across the league. He got in a Jack Harlow song. People were saying he's untouchable. And a James Harden trade, obviously that was, they were over-exaggerations at the time, but nonetheless, that talk was going around Riker, and he put up, then the, the expectations, people's opinion of him just slowly went down over the course of the season, and you look at his sort of splits, box score, averages this year, still solid, not a massive jump from his rookie year, but still really, really good for a young guy in this league. Riker, I think he went from too high to too low. And now we're seeing, you brought it up to start off. Heat read it. We scanned through it all. We're reading Heat tweets. We're seeing what people are saying. They want him gone. I think people are overreacting to the the poor series he had. He did have 14 points in that final game, though, Riker. They want to make it a fire sale in the Miami Heat. It it doesn't make sense. You're right. He improved this year, just not at the rate that they wanted him to improve, but that's not the reason they're not low on Tyler hero. They're just high on having a better team. And so that's what people are saying and Raptors subreddit or not Raptors, Miami heat subreddit and Twitter and all the space that you can check where fans have the ability to comment on what they want to see this off season. They're saying, Hey, Tyler Harris is our most marketable or most tradable piece. So if you could package him up for some of the guys that they're eyeing up, which are very lofty, might I add, we'll bring it up at the end of the video. That's the guy that they would want to move because you want to have around Butler, who's obviously the spirit of a winning team. You need to keep around Bam, who there's just not too many scoring defensive four to fives that are still athletic in the NBA. So they're like the unicorn now that that's fought. So Bam out of bio, you want to keep around. You know, I think the rest, basically, Heat fans are saying they could move them. They'd be fine to move them. And Harrow seems to be the most tradable. So it's not that they're low. They're just willing to move on from him if it gets them a better player. Yeah, no, that that's for sure. And it's going to be interesting. I think the Heat are going to be one of the most talked about, looked at teams this offseason. And obviously, we got Kawhi Leonard in the thumbnail. We're 13 minutes into this vid. So let's go into the the fan expectations, seeing what people are thinking about, because obviously the LA Clippers, they have struggled against the Dallas Mavericks. They won game three. We didn't do a full out reaction to that. We could probably make a whole video on Chris Stapp's poor Zingus Riker because he has struggled for in that series and was the reason they lost in game three, at least. I thought he had 20 points in game two. Game one or two, but he got shut down you can't say he had struggled in the series if he, he had one bad game good. that he they hasn't lost like the the stinky pinky we like to see but if the clippers lose in round one to the dallas mavericks Kawhi leonard his name has been thrown around as leaving he's a free agent this offseason miami they're a destination the warriors and the knicks or other teams mentioned but he fans want him think it's possible No, it's not possible, and they don't think it's possible, but obviously his name is in conversation if it does get further reported that he's looking at free agency more seriously than maybe if the Clippers were to make a deep run. And obviously the historic winning nature of the Miami Heat and sort of the rumors around if he would go to the Heat in his previous free agency those are going to rear their heads again. So obviously they feel wishful that he could come, but I don't think he's the most realistic or immediate one that they'd be looking at in the off season. The one thing you could say about it is there has been a lot of talk before Jimmy was in Miami that him and Kawhi Leonard are pretty close and they've 
talked about, inquired about playing up together. And I could see if the Clippers, they're not that attractive of a spot right now, especially if they lose in the first round. Miami is a place going back to the Eastern Conference. I, I could really see Kawhi landing, but Oladipo, he's another guy. He's he's on this team. He's a free agent as well, but obviously suffered a significant injury this season. People were saying he could be out all of next year, but then a, a doctor came out and said, oh no, I expect him to be back by November. So there's question marks there regarding Victor Oladipo. Do you think he, he's been vocal? He's been adamant about wanting to play for the Miami Heat. He only got a few games in with the team. So do you think the Heat come back and re-sign him? Because he could be a, a low-risk, high-reward player if he's able to come back in November because I'm sure there's not going to be a huge market for him. But this is the thing, and this was the apprehension about signing this guy or why you would sign and trade for Oladipo because of his injury history mm -hmm. and... He hasn't played in about three years to the level that when he really made a name for himself, Heat fans are saying the exact same thing. Dream situation for them, one-year contract, let him prove himself, and then sign him for the big money. But they don't want to take that risk because you could be tying your money up in a guy that gets injured again to start the next season or that he really just is only 10 point per i mean how many injuries can you sustain ben before eventually your performance dips because yeah. he's a guy that's very quick very athletic at some point he's gonna lose that quick first step so yeah we saw his efficiency and you brought up tyler hero his improvements kind of he did improve a little bit in the box score his efficiency was lower this season and victor oladipo took an even significanter hit significanter that's a word but even greater hit than tyler hero so that's a tough one to look at kyle lowry's a name that's been thrown around a lot during the trade deadline he fans want to sign him for cheap kyle lowry wants 25 million dollars for two years you're not getting him for cheap do you think the heat should go after him 25 million for two years would be 12 and a half per year i think they'd be fine with no, that no, 25 they would be per year yeah, nobody in the NBA is going to pay him 25 per year. And if the Raptors do, I am going to personally boycott the NBA for a full year, for two full years, because I will not fathom to watch a game where Kyle Lowry in the twilight, the deep twilight of his career is getting paid $25 million. He but then $25 million for two years, sign and trade, get the Raptors some benefit, or just straight up let him go and sign there, whatever he wants. I think the Heat would be fine to get him just on the right money. What's the right money? What's the right money for you? Twelve million a year. No way he gets twelve million. I I guarantee he'll make twenty. I I'll book it. I'll, I'll twenty book it. is rough. I'm booking it, Riker. I play in that animation. Kyle Lowry is gonna get at least twenty million per year. Even if it's a one year deal, he's getting that money. I can. Guarantee if you were the Miami Heat, would you rather sign Kyle Lowry at twenty five million dollars per year or Colin Sexton at twenty five million dollars per year? Probably Sexton because he's younger, but right? Sexton's yeah. going to want a longer term deal and is less proven. Kyle Lowry's a better player right now, and they want right now. So that's an interesting situation. Yeah. Bradley Beal's another name that's thrown in there. Do you want They, they want Bradley this? Beal. I think that they, the Miami Heat, obviously, Miami Heat's name is always put into the yeah. trade picture whenever there's any player. And obviously Bradley Beal has been a guy whose name is circulating just with how bad the team has been. And then obviously with John Wall going to Houston, they thought maybe Bradley Beal could be the next guy. I think that the Heat don't have any players that they could package up because Bam would be really the only person that you would move. And that doesn't make any sense. So we can move along from that one, Ben. And then the final couple things that we saw again, when scrolling through what Miami Heat fans are saying is you don't pick up the team option of I don't know who you'd replace him with, but you don't pick up the team option of Goran Dragic. I'm trying to pull up the payroll right now to see if, thankfully, they way overpaid for Andre Iguodala back in the day, but he's up for a team option. You don't pick that up. And then you hope some of your guys develop K KZ, KZ, Akpala, Akpala. You're hoping that he develops a three-point shot and you're hoping that Bam steps up his game again. So in a dream world, obviously, they fill in that point guard open position that they're sort of forcing to create or being forced to create they pick up a superstar somehow by doing something and then they internally develop their team then that sounds to me like what every franchise wants to happen in any particular offseason but of course heat fans they're ambitious so yeah well the heat are a destination they're a team with championship expectations so We'll see what happens. But let us know what you guys think about the Miami Heat, where they go from here. We talked about a lot. 
some crazy, some less crazy. So we'll we'll see what happens with the Miami Heat going forward. You guys are the best for making this fire. Check out the Instagram, the TikTok, all that cool stuff. Filmed a couple outros, don't have them into OBS just yet, but we got a lot of cool stuff coming. Record, do you have any last words? Play that segment one more time, Ben. We got our first knockout. Yo, your mouth and hold your stomach in tight to take this hit that you bought. That's tough. That's a <laughs> That's a tough one. Signing off. Cheers.